everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at an old fiddle tune, which is called Gypsy Waltz. Now, I usually always write my own stuff for these lessons every week, but uh, I was at a jam session um, last week with a group of guys, and uh, there was a guy on fiddle that started playing this, and I'd never heard it before, but as he, he kind of called out the chords, and as I was playing it, I thought, man, that is, it's very different, it's very kind of spooky sounding, um, and I thought it would make for a really good lesson, and it's not, there's no copyright infringement, it's just some obscure song, I don't even know who wrote it. But uh, anyway, there's not a whole lot of examples of it out there, but you can find a few on YouTube if you look around. But what I've done is I've taken the fiddle part and I've transcribed it to the guitar. And so we're going to learn that. That'll give you a whole new set of licks to, to play if you're ever in a jam session, which is great. But also you'll get the jam track with this lesson and you can, uh, you can just improvise over it. It's very easy to do. It's in the key of G minor, so you could play in the G minor pentatonic scale and have lots of fun with it. Um, so I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second video, as well as download the tablature for this lesson and the MP3 jam track to practice with, you can get all of that at ActiveMelody.com. Just look for EP154. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so let's talk through the structure of this song uh, first, and then that'll define our parameters so we know what we're working with them. And then we'll get into all the specific lead notes and the scales that are used for those. So this song is a waltz, and a waltz uh, means that it's in 3-4 time. So most of what we play, a lot of what we play anyway, is in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, that just means there's four beats to each measure. Um, so you'd count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. With, the, well, with a waltz, it's 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, so it only goes up to 3, and then you reset. Um, so that's uh, that's our the, the rhythmic component to this. Now the the chords, there's four chords that are used, um, and I'm going to show you. I'll call them out uh, here, just what the chords are. If you want to get into the specific strum pattern that, that I'm using and actually how to finger the chords, um, I do have a little bonus lesson for premium members, um, and it's also got an, the uh, MP3 jam track that's missing the rhythm part, so you have that to practice with as well. But uh, for for this. Uh, video, we're going to just go through the chords real quick. So the first chord is a, a G minor, then it goes to a D7, then back to your G minor. And then here's kind of the weird twist, it goes to an A7, back to the D7, and then back to the G minor. And then that repeats. Now the only other chord, uh, which is in the second part, is this chord which is a D-sharp chord, or an E-flat chord, it's just an E-flat major. And then we're back to the G minor. We go back to that E-flat, then to the A7, then the D7, and then back to your G minor. So that's the chord structure. structure. Pretty simple. Um, easy chords, they're nothing really complicated, no weird jazz chords or anything. Um, now, for the lead part, um, what, we're, what I'm going to show you, we're, or the way that I think of this, is, is playing this in the minor pentatonic. Uh, so um, it's actually going to be the minor scale, but we're, we're going to start with the minor pentatonic scale since most of us know that. If you don't know that, if you're not sure what I mean when I say minor pentatonic scale, I have a blues lead course uh, at ActiveMelody.com that explains what that is and what the patterns are and all of that. But I'm going to assume you know that for this. And we're going to be in pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale for G. So where would that be? I think most of you know that. But if you were to play a G minor chord, wherever your bar is, that's your root fret. So it would look like this. This is the minor pentatonic. Now that's pattern one for G. Now, to add the two notes that I'm talking about, we're going to add this note. It's an A, A note. Just look where it is in reference to the pat to the scale though, to the to the to the frets. And then we're gonna add this note, which is a D sharp. And what we've just done uh, by adding those two notes, we've given that minor pentatonic scale uh, a, a whole new feel, and now it's a minor scale. It's just there's no pentatonic. Penta means five, five notes. Now we've added two extra notes, so we're obviously beyond pentatonic. Um, so now we've got the minor scale. And, and that, just by having those two notes, 
It gives you all these extra little things that you can noodle around with when you start to improvise. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is learn this melody because it's a great melody and there's a lot of takeaways from it. But then once you're comfortable playing the melody, try improvising. Put on the jam track and try improvising with that minor scale. And then find those two notes, that A and the D sharp. Find it in the other patterns so that you can start to uh, really understand how to play in a minor key. And that's really all there is to it. You don't have to use those two notes. You could just stay in the, the pentatonic. It's just a, it gets a little boring with just those five notes. And having two more uh, increases you by a pretty great percentage. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so now let's start in the specific notes. Here's what we're going to start with. Now here's how I'm thinking of this. These first three notes are right out of the G minor chord. So think of your G minor chord. Bar the third fret and then you've got your ring finger and your pinky on the fifth fret. Fifth string and fourth string. That's a G minor chord. It's the same as G major chord. Just take your middle finger off. Right? So the first three notes are five, four, and three. Those are your string numbers out of that chord. And then I'm going to slide up to this position. Now where, where I went was pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. Remember pattern two? There's that note. So that would be the seventh fret, third string. Then I'm going to come up and grab this note, and I use my pinky for it. It's an eighth fret, second string. And as soon as I play that, I slide from the seventh fret down to the fifth fret on the third string immediately. Down to the third fret on the third string. So. Now then, as I'm kind of as that note is ringing out on the third fret third string, I come up and play on the fifth fret first string to play that A note. Really cool. Now that the reason I called uh, I showed you those two extra notes in the minor pentatonic scale that make up the minor scale. That's one of them. There's that A note. So after we play that A note, then I'm going to play, isn't that cool? So what I'm doing there is I just bar the first two strings here on the third fret and I play the second string. And then I come back to that A note, fifth fret, first string, and do a half bend and release like this. A half bend means you go up one fret from where you started. There's the note I'm trying to match. It's easier to do half bends uh, because obviously you're not bending them as, as far and so I end up doing a lot of those on when I'm playing acoustic guitar and doing bends. And then we're back to the, the fifth fret or sorry the third fret first string. okay? Third fret second string and then watch this after I play that, It's a little slide. It happens. It sounds more difficult than it is when you hear it, but it's actually just third fret, second string. I use my ring finger for this. Come up to the sixth fret on the third string. As soon as I play it, I slide it down to the fifth fret. Third fret. It's all in the third string. And then there's the fifth fret, fourth string, and we hit that one twice. So let's back it up. We have. So that's the lick. That's a great lick. Even if you just walk away with that one lick, try playing that in a blues jam or whatever that or even, you know, mix it up. But um because what you're doing by grabbing that note, you're adding uh that's called the blue note. Uh so and that's what makes the minor pentatonic scale the blues scale. Just that one note. Um, all right, let's back up from the start. We have now. This is where it gets fun, I think, uh, just because it's so unexpected. This is where the song goes to the A7 chord. So what I played was, and this is the melody. You'll hear this if you hear the the, the fiddles play this. Uh, if you can find it on YouTube, but it's. 
Isn't that cool? So all I'm doing is playing the G minor chord, which I showed you uh, the, at the beginning. And I'm just starting it here on the fifth string. So I'm going five, four, three, two. So after I play those four notes, I come and grab this note. And that's what throws the whole thing. It just sounds so unexpected. Now that note is that blue note that I just mentioned. Um, and it's the sixth fret third string. And look at where that is. If you think of a, if you're playing an A chord or A seventh chord, that note is in the A seventh chord. That's why it matches perfectly when it, when the song switches to that A seven chord. Great little lick. And then it repeats. That time, instead of playing the sixth fret, we play the fifth fret on the third string. And with the right hand, all I'm doing, I'm not alternate picking that, I'm just going down, 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 down. So it makes it easy. You're just basically brushing the strings down. And then to conclude that lick, I play that. And this is just walking right down the minor pentatonic scale, starting here on the third fret, uh, third string, fifth fret, fourth string, third fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fifth string. So it's... And once I get down to the fifth fret, fifth string, I let this finger collapse. You can see it right here. And what I'm doing is I'm barring the fifth string and the fourth string so that the next note I play is on the fifth fret, fourth string. And it's okay to let the fifth string ring out. Just like that. So... That's that little walk down. Easy to do. And then I concluded with a little um, little part there. I say I did. Well, you know, the, the fil fiddle melody does when I in the versions I heard. And so that's the second fret, third string. And then we hammer onto the third fret, third string, back to the second fret, and then the fifth fret, fourth string. Okay, and that concludes that first half. Let me back up now and play through it uh, from starting here on the fifth fret, fifth string. And that's part one. Now part two goes into a, a little something that I play over that E flat chord. Um, and I'm going to save that for, uh, for premium membership. But that gives you a good idea of the gypsy waltz, the song structure, the four chords that are used, and then the, the whole, f actually it's the first three, three quarters of the song you've already learned. Um, there's that one little last part. Um, and the, the structure is I play through what I just showed you twice then I play that extra part and then it goes back and I play through it twice and then the extra part and that's what the jam track does it just keeps looping in that order so that's all we have for part one I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope your takeaway would be to um, if you're not a premium member and you're just learning the melody that's cool uh, just take this and, and learn how to figure out how to play it and then how to apply some of these licks like that ghost or not the ghost but the blues note there the blue note like how would you apply that to something else that you're you're playing little slides like that um, it's all those little little pieces that make up the language of playing blues or pl or improvising on the guitar it's not just blues you're you're getting into a whole different thing with this style um, all right i will see you in part two